public disorder, spontaneous or otherwise, can have a debilitating effect on the tourism sector in Barbados and as a matter of fact in any of our Caribbean states as a rule on effect. Remember we are now marketing and promoting the region as one and indeed there is a perception that the region is one. I think therefore that this aspect of public disorder which permits real fear and risk of victimization over and above the fear and risk generated by acts of conventional criminal activity must be tackled resolutely by law enforcement and the tourism sector. If people do not feel that they are traveling to somewhere that is secure, then why should they choose to come there for an experience of a vacation? This, I think, has been emphasized even more since 9-11, when after the disaster and terrorism and so on, and the feeling of people wanting to be more with their families, that they are conscious of where they are traveling with their family or with their loved ones. Reliability of a healthcare system is also key, and together with safety of water and food sources. Like in those consultants, uh, the Ministry of Tourism will be developing a white paper on tourism development in Barbados. The white paper will be a statement of government's policy on tourism development over the medium to long term. The paper will serve as the overall policy framework within which the master plan will be elaborated. The development of this white paper will involve undertaking a national consultation on tourism development in Barbados. The consultation will take the form of a series of town hall meetings and tourism stakeholder consultations across the length and breadth of Barbados so that we can hear the opinion of as many inhabitants of the island as we can. We will also create the appropriate website and social media account that will allow persons in Barbados and beyond our borders to make their input electronically on this very important topic. We had one main objective in this era was to ensure as we track the negative reports and we constantly monitor the shifting of the reporting. After three, four days, we were not breaking news anymore. We were like second in the news. You know, like, come up next in the news, boom, 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 boom. Move from second, we love that, move down to third. We to, kind of almost came off the radar and <laughs> went over the time of what was reported. And we wanted to focus on reducing the negative reports and the frequency of those reports. When we tracked it all, about 102 real hard reports across the international landscape were carried. And 88 of these negative patrols had our image just really given a warm time. But some of the contents of the report that which Barbara then wanted to know caused us grave concern. Because they then now started to talk about the human rights violations by the um, security forces. They almost tried to get um, local, they did it, local, what do you call them affiliates that would use the great cell phone and they couldn't go in with a camera and give them accurate reports because a Jamaican can, can walk into any area and, and, and pass and, 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 and give them the story and they would be reported accurately because you look at how they got that, they would track good finally.